Hi everyone. <clears throat> uh, so today we are going to go through, uh, let me share my screen with you all. Uh, we're going to go through the third uh, lesson uh, here of our heat unit. And uh, what that means then is that you will have these necessary skills to complete the assignment that has been posted to Google Classroom. Um, so again, this is going to be a more calculation-based uh, lesson um, as opposed to the last two, which have been a lot more of just uh, terminology and also just kind of background knowledge as well. So uh, we're going to look at energy changes in one substance and energy transfer using conduction. And there's one formula that we're going to use, um, and we're going to get to go into our data table and reference booklet as well. Uh, so calculating energy changes in one substance uh, is our first slide here. When energy is given off in the form of heat, that value can be measured and calculated. And we said yesterday that that measure um, of energy will be in joules. Um, and so we said that we'd use a capital J for that. If uh, the amount of heat given off by a substance is to be measured, it's specific heat capacity, which is something we talked about yesterday um, as being the amount of heat required to raise, raise one gram of a substance one degree Celsius. Um, we will get something, we will get a term called the specific heat capacity. And this is in your data table and reference booklet. Uh, this is on page... Uh, I believe it's page six or seven, uh, page three, four, five, sorry. Um, so these are all the specific heat capacities of uh, different compounds that we'll commonly use. If something isn't shown here, I will give it to you in the question. Um, so we'll look at a question later with iron, and I will give you in the question the specific heat capacity um, that you need. So um, in terms of... Um, calculating the energy changes we're going to use one basic formula and it's this one here it's q is equal to mc delta t q is equal to the energy or joules that are absorbed or released and we'll talk about how to describe um, whether q it needs to be a positive or negative value in return um, in association here with absorbed or released energy uh, m is the mass of the substance c is the specific heat capacity and delta T is the change in temperature. Um, so whatever the final temperature was minus whatever the initial temperature was, um, we're going to use that to calculate uh, these values here. So that's a formula that we're going to use. Um, again, here is the um, diagnosis for whether Q needs to be positive or negative. It is worth noting, and if you actually look at uh, your data table and reference booklet, none of these specific heats are negative values. And you shouldn't have a negative value um, at all in your actual calculation. So this bottom sentence here says the value of Q itself will always be positive. You need to understand mentally if Q is representing heat being absorbed or heat energy being released. The negative sign is simply re representing if it's absorbed or released. So we will do the calculation and we might not get a positive or a negative Q. Um, and so what we'll need to do is assign either a positive value if heat's being absorbed or a negative value if heat is being released. Um, those are the two kind of points that we need to be aware of. So as I mentioned, today is mostly just going through example problems. So example number one here says, what quantity of heat is required to raise the temperature of 100 grams of liquid water 10 degrees? So Q is equal to MC delta T. And so we want to... Um, we actually have um, we have a couple different values here that we can fill in. We have the mass. We know that the mass is equal to 100 grams. The C, which is the specific heat capacity of uh, whatever we're talking about, we can find that. We were told we're dealing with liquid water, so we'll use 4.184 as our value for that. So we'll use 4.184. And then we want to raise the temperature 10 degrees. So we would know that the change in temperature, it doesn't matter what the actual temperatures were. We know that the change itself overall will be 10 degrees Celsius. So plugging a bunch of our values in here, we have Q is equal to 100 times 4.1. That was really messy. 4.184. And then our change was 10 degrees Celsius. And so we can multiply all those values together. 4.184 times 100 times 10, and you get a Q value equal to 4,184.1 
And we said that our units for Q were always joules. So that's the first example there. Uh, example number two says, what quantity of heat? Again, quantity of heat means that we don't know what Q is. What quantity, quantity of heat is released when 420 grams, 420.0 grams is equal to our mass, and it's of lead, cools from 85 degrees Celsius, so delta T, cools from 85 degrees Celsius to 25 degrees Celsius. So the final temperature is 25 degrees Celsius, the initial temperature was 85 degrees Celsius. The specific heat capacity, again, I said I'd give you that value, is 0 0.13 joules per gram degrees Celsius. So we can plug all those values in here. Q is equal to mc delta T. Q is going to be the mass is 420. The C, the specific heat capacity, is 0 0.13. And then the temperature difference we said was 25 degrees, so the final temperature, minus 85 degrees, which is the initial temperature. And we will get a value here of 420 times 0.13 times 25 minus 85. And we'll get a value here of negative 3,276 joules. Now, going back to my little statement that I made earlier, which said that the value of Q will always be positive, we don't want to have a negative number of joules. We don't want to report that as our answer. Instead, what we want to say is Q is equal to 3,276 joules, and then we would scroll back up and see um, if the heat is being released, Q will be negative. And in this case, we were told that heat is being released. So our Q value, as we discovered, was negative here. So we would say that there was 3,276 joules released. And that would be our final answer. It would be this one. Where'd my little pen go? This one down here. That would be how we'd want to report that answer. Okay, so that's our second example. Um, if we were in the classroom, we would actually set up a calorimeter and do some calorimetry. Um, basically what this is, is calculating heat transferred from one object into another. Um, and so when heat is transferred from one substance to another, it can be calculated. That process is called calorimetry. Um, and so we'd have a thermometer in, in there, and it would actually measure um, the heat that was being produced or released. That heat would turn and uh, stir up the solution as well. And so you'd be able to calculate how much heat was being transferred from here all the way over to this object here. Um, you can set up at-home calorimeters. Um, I'll find and I'll post a video of um, someone setting up an at-home calorimeter. If, you're, if it's something you're interested in, um, just checking it out, seeing uh, what it does, for sure you can do that. Um, again, if we were in the classroom, for sure we would have done um, an experiment revolving around this. Um, what's interesting about calorimetry, though, is that from that, you end up getting another formula. So this is our second formula. And the second formula is that the uh, heat of the system, oh, hello, sorry. The heat of the system is equal to the negative uh, heat of the surroundings. The heat of the system is equal to the negative heat of the surroundings. Or Q of the system is equal to negative Q of the surroundings. And since Q is equal to MC delta T, you can plug in MC delta T of the system is equal to the negative of MC delta T of the surroundings. Um, uh, or the other way that you could write it is like this down here. So in other words, that has to do with the first law of thermodynamics, saying that heat energy will either be always be conserved. We're never going to lose heat energy. It'll just be transferred from one object or one thing into another object or another thing. And so that's how we describe that relationship is these two formulas here. Okay, so example number three here says, how much heat is absorbed by a 25 gram sample of gold at 25 degrees Celsius when it is immersed in boiling water? The specific heat capacity of gold is 0.128 joules per gram degree Celsius, and the specific heat capacity of water is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. Uh, so we have a couple pieces of information. Um, I would probably divide this up into two sections. The first section I would put is I would put the gold section over here, and I would put the water section 
Uh, that's a little bit far away. I'd put the water section right here. I want to be able to divide up my pieces of information. So I know that for the gold, the mass is 25.0 grams. Uh, I know that the temperature, a uh, sample of gold at 25 degrees Celsius when it is immersed in boiling water, uh, I know that the temperature of this is 25 degrees Celsius. So I know that the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. The specific heat capacity of gold, uh, so C is equal to 0 0.128 joules per gram degrees Celsius. And I also know that the specific heat capacity of water, I know that the specific heat capacity of water will be 4.184 joules per grams degrees Celsius. Um, the other piece of information that I would know here um, <clears throat> is I would know here in this question that the delta T, I would know that the delta T uh, would have to be, well, if it's boiling water, we'd know that this would have to be at uh, 100 degrees Celsius here. And so what we're asked here is how much heat is absorbed by a 25.0 gram sample of gold at 25 degrees Celsius when it is immersed in boiling water. The specific heat capacity of the gold is 0 0.128 joules per gram degree Celsius and the specific heat capacity of water is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. <clears throat> so we know two different things. We know that the, the heat of the system has to be exactly equal to the heat of the surroundings. And so um, the idea that we want to eventually calculate here is we want to figure out how much heat is going to be um, absorbed. And so we want to know, um, we actually want to know how much this temperature is going to um, go up here. Um, just give me a second here. Sorry. I'm just going to mute myself for a second. I just... Got to do something real quick. <clears throat> 